Have you ever had one of those periods where you are just working really, really hard? All you do is work and yet you just feel like you're getting nothing done. Well, that's kind of how September has been for me. I was planning to dedicate 100% of my time to my dream kitchen renovation. I even moved my office into the living room kitchen area so I could hunker down and focus, but it just hasn't worked out that way. And I mentioned this not to complain, but because I think in a lot of my videos, I might gloss over some of the struggle that we all deal with when facing new things. And I'm guessing a lot of you can relate to this because, well, it is human nature to be a little bit fearful of things that are new. But usually when I'm making a video to share with you guys, the excitement of the new project, of sharing everything, kind of overcomes that fear and anxiety and I can just power right through it. But with the kitchen design, that hasn't happened like I hope. There's just a lot of new things and it's a huge project and getting the model and the design finalized and in the format and form that I have to, learning a new piece of cabinet making software for the CNC, basically do the job that a seasoned professional would do the first time I'm doing this. Now normally I am kind of all for just power through it, get it done, mind over matter. But there are times where continuing to just sort of brute force and try to power through things can be counterproductive because the frustration prevents you from tackling a problem logically. And I was getting to that point with the kitchen. So I decided the best thing to do was to step away from the kitchen for a few days, pick a project that was kind of low hanging fruit, an easy win, just to make some progress, reset and get my head back in the game. And that is really what this video is about. Now at the time of recording, I'm happy to report, I've started to make progress on the kitchen again. I've got the design finalized, all the dimensions, everything specced out. I've learned enough of the cabinet making software that I've successfully made one sort of small test cabinet. And it is super cool because once you know the software, you can just cut out all your cabinets on the CNC. It puts in slots and grooves and spaces for the hardware. So assembly is basically just like putting Ikea together. But all that is gonna be for the next video. This time we're gonna catch up with all the work I did during that little reset period. I fixed a beginner mistake I made with the flooring in the hallway upstairs. We got the trim and doors in and painted and it's made a pretty dramatic difference. So we're also gonna do an updated tour at the end of the video showing the finished guest bath with all the glass, the finished hallway area and maybe some other surprises and updates we'll think of by then. But now I rambled on way too long so let's get upstairs and get to work. I wanted to share a mistake in planning that I made. Everywhere you read online says you need a three quarter inch gap between the edge of the flooring and the walls. That means you need at least three quarters inch of trim to cover up that gap. However, when the guys came to install the doors, the trim was included around the doors in that package and they used three quarters inch trim. And this is something I learned after the fact that your baseboard trim has to be thinner than the trim around your doors. That means we're gonna to have to use 11 16 baseboard trim and some of the gaps are not quite covered. You can't take the floorboards out, that's not an option. So what I'm gonna to try to do is just extend them. I've cut a bunch of these little pieces of the flooring at 45 degrees and I'm gonna wedge them in and glue them to the ends of the floorboards. Hopefully that will hide the gaps. Now, if it doesn't look good after we glue these little extension pieces to the boards, our last resort is gonna be add quarter round on top of the baseboard trim to extend the baseboard out and cover the gaps, but I really, really don't want to have to resort to that, so, so hopefully we don't have to. Voices in my head get loud and they keep telling me that I'm a fool for trusting in these wings. Maybe, baby, baby, this will fly. So I think this is working all right, but there are still some little gaps between the patch piece and the regular board. So I'm gonna make my own wood filler. I've got some sawdust here from the actual floorboards. I'm gonna mix that with a little bit of wood glue, rub that into the gaps, and hopefully they'll disappear and be basically unnoticeable. A wet rag, make sure we don't get any on the, the floor. 
we'd match the grain, it would be perfect, but that's pretty darn good. We're gonna go ahead and put the trim on the wall. And while I'm doing that, Kat is actually helping out behind me. She is masking off the hardware on the doors so she can start coming behind me and painting after the trim is installed. A shame, think something new under the sun. Mm. You can't take back some things you already done, done. No. So I guess I should probably address the question about a different color tool because I always get a ton of crap from you guys whenever I use something different. No, no, I haven't given up on the orange, but I actually loaned Jake a bunch of my tools because he's renovating a three unit building that he just bought. That's why you haven't seen him in these videos. Oh, and by the way, if you guys want a little more renovation content, Jake is actually putting all kinds of time lapse and stuff of his renovation up on his Instagram, Renovate Jake. I'll put a link in the description. Let's like totally bomb him out, see if we can get him like thousands of followers and just be like, what's going on? Anyway, I'm gonna cut now. This is a little different than uh, caulking concrete forms, gotta say. But fortunately, a wet rag is your friend with this stuff. Trim is done and I'm pretty happy how it came out. I think that those extensions and the boards that we put in will probably fall in the category of something that you would never notice unless you point out to somebody. What do you guys think? Should I come back with quarter round? I think it would sacrifice a little bit of the modern look personally, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Next up, I got to get to a little bit of editing so this video doesn't take even longer than it already has to get out. So while I'm doing that, Kat's going to jump in, put her painting expertise to the use on a little bit more basic stuff, painting the baseboards and the doors. When she's done with that, we'll come back, we'll do a quick updated tour of the upstairs and bathroom. And while she's painting, it's time for a quick message from this video's awesome sponsor, Benjamin Moore. I use Benjamin Moore paints to paint the entire back half of my building, the bedrooms, hallways, studio, and now the trim and doors. And making the choice of Benjamin Moore was easy because they are the absolute color authority. They've got 3,500 colors more than any other paint company. Not only that, but I talked to professional painters I know and they all swear by Benjamin Moore, so I knew it was a safe bet. So now the deets on the products I used. First was the Fresh Start Primer, followed up by a coat of their Regal Select Paint in Matte, and I went with Chantilly Lace and had them tint the primer and the paint, so I got great one coat coverage. And I did both spray applications on the walls and roll on application on the trim and doors, and found that the Regal Select paint did a great job of laying down flat and leaving a smooth, durable finish in both applications. So let's talk value. Benjamin Moore is per gallon somewhat more expensive than other types of paint, but because you get better one coat coverage and it's more durable and lasts longer, you don't need as many coats of paint, which means you use less paint overall and thus will save money overall going with Benjamin Moore. And it's super durable. I pulled this paint chip out of the roller pan and I call it a chip, but really when you look at it, it's not what I think of when I think of a paint chip. It's almost like a thick plastic. And knowing that this type of protection is on my walls 
just gives me peace of mind that this paint job is gonna last. So if you're interested in trying Benjamin Moore paint for yourself, you can actually order Benjamin Moore paint samples online and have them delivered to your home so you can see what they look like. Then once you find the color you like, you can order all the paint you want online and have it shipped for pickup at your local Benjamin Moore store. Thanks to Benjamin Moore for supporting the channel and helping me get this place painted in beautiful Chantilly lace. And now let's get back to the video. Mike is super busy. So he's enlisted this gal to help do some painting. Not what I thought I would be doing after going to art school, but hey, I will be able to use some of the skills. Today he's got me painting some trim. He's got me painting doors. It's all gonna be white and look fantastic with everything else that is going on in the back area of the building. Out. I'm gonna give you a little behind the scenes hashtag youtuber life I'm trying to get two videos done in the next week So while cat's been hard at work painting I've been in here editing the video of the work we did yesterday So I'm gonna head back there help her out with the painting for a bit actually I said she's hard at work But I haven't even been there to check. Let's go see. Let's go see what the progress has been All right cat, I know you're taking Bruce home right now, but you did good it's looking sharp So I gotta pick up where you left off keep busting through this That was a long, hard day, but uh, glorious white trim surrounds us right now. I feel like we're in an insane asylum. <laughs> Now with everything installed, it's time for an update tour. Oh, and before we get there, Kat, whip around and just do a pan on this room. You got it, Mike. So this over here is a living room. It's kind of set up so we got like a makeshift sort of living area. We just had some air mattresses in here like when Kipto, 1000 and everyone was here. So we can host guests. It is not really ready for viewing yet. All right, and this, uh, this keeps karma inside. So I haven't shown the area with the stairs between the back bedrooms and the front living room in a while. It's because we haven't done anything here. Got the furnace room over there. We're going to have bifold doors here, put in stair treads, all that stuff. I've never done stairs before, so kind of just saving that for last after the kitchen, after the laundry. Also got the drywall guys coming. They're going to put drywall here, insides around there, over here, and then probably going to leave this little patch of brick right above the door exposed just so there's that little bit of the old building still here. Yeah, for some spice. <laughs> yes, for some spice. <laughs> so moving down this way, you can see the white is just glowing. Loving how the trim came out. It's modern. I love how it's kind of a minimalist trim. Over here, well, this is the cat's litter box area now, but I still haven't really decided what I'm gonna do with this little area. So this nook is where the elevator is that goes downstairs. And I haven't removed that, it's still there, but we covered it up with floor because we can't really be using the elevator and pass inspection, but I haven't gotten rid of it because, well, you never know. In the short term, I'm thinking maybe I do a little built-in sort of standing desk here, or the other option is when I build out the roof deck, I'm not sure how that's gonna work with egress for code. I might need to have two staircases from the roof down, in which case I might have to add a spiral staircase here going up to the roof. Part of the reason I've just decided to leave this open is I'm not sure about that yet. Moving down this way, you can see new doors installed. I can't tell you how nice it is to have doors, especially in the 
the bathroom. And speaking of the bathroom, you guys haven't seen it since we installed the mirrors and glass and definitely makes a difference. So this is like a different version of a fireside chat. We'll call it a, a sink side chat. So the big updates here are really the glass that's separating the shower. And I went for the Starfire ultra clear glass. So you don't get any green tint, love that. And this huge mirror, which I had custom made. So it is exactly the same width as this sink. Now I know some of you might be asking, where's the door to the shower? Well, it's partially open. I love the look of an open shower. It can be a little bit of pain. You do have to worry a little bit about water splashing out. What I decided to do was just put that glass in, live with it for a little bit, see how I feel about it. I can always go back and add a matching glass door later. One other thing in here that I can already tell you I would have done differently is the white grout. I used the epoxy grout, which supposedly doesn't yellow. And I don't know if it's yellowing, but it's grout. It's a little divot. It just shows everything and just traps debris dirt, you name it. It's just really hard to keep it clean. I gotta live with it now, but I don't think I'll do white grout in the master bathroom. Let's put it that way. Moving into the studio area here, we did get the trim done on the walls. I still gotta figure out the trim against the brick. Karma, what do you think? Looking good? Yeah. Oh, buddy, you sleepy old man. And this is for the thermostat. Haven't installed it yet. I think I'm going with Nest. I don't know. What, what smart thermostats do you guys like? But anyway, we are done with the hallway. I'm pretty happy how it came out. I think it was definitely the right call to kind of take a break from the kitchen, have this little victory reset myself because I definitely feel better about getting back into the flow of the kitchen now and it's moving forward more quickly than it was before. I think the next probably at least three or four videos are all gonna be about the kitchen renovation, kind of a mini series within the series. I'm hoping to finish it by Thanksgiving, but that's maybe a little bit of wishful thinking. You guys hold me to it. By Christmas, we gotta get that kitchen done. Kat's over there giving me looks like she's gonna just leave if the kitchen is not done by then. I don't think we're at that point just yet, Mike. And on that note, we are out. I'll see you next time. Best part of any cleanup is when you find that thing that had the wood glue on it and you get to just peel off all the wood glue. It's so satisfying. Get it out in one big piece. That's always the best.